I'm going to introduce myself very quick. So I, I'm in the company for 18 years. Uh, my name is Luis Gondin, as Camila said. Gondin is like everybody knows me. So if you look for Luis, nobody will find me. But if you look for Gondin, everybody knows that I am. Uh, I've been working like in more than 15 positions uh, so far in the company, like in four countries. I have three daughters and one wife. My wife asked me to say that I have one wife. Because uh, <laughs> I, I got divorced before. I, I would like to have the presentation from how to stay married, but I missed this. So. Uh, All right, so uh, my name is Suro. Uh, it's a short, I mean, short to make that Indian name not so complicated, right? Um, I've been actually in the company just one year. I come from HP, right? So I spent about 17 years at HP prior to that, uh, done various positions in there, uh, you know, and of course, you know, very excited to be at ABI, one daughter, one wife, right? So as is Karav Gunjim said as well. It's important to mention. Uh, we're going to focus on four things here uh, in our strategy, why NPS? Uh, training and rollout. Uh, you guys will understand that we know nothing, basically. So if you want to have like questions after uh, the presentation, forget about. It. We don't know how to answer. <laughs> uh, that's why we have like Jonathan here to uh, Jim Jonathan can jump in and answer all the questions because we don't know. Uh, but of course, we are just starting. As Camila said, uh, I'm gonna share about a little bit about our our view and a short uh, film that we have explaining how we're going to the market and so on, and why NPS is important for us. So basically, we are a company that uh, we have like uh, nowadays more than 55 billion in net revenue, so it's quite huge. Uh, our EBITDA margins are over 30%, so we are doing quite well as well. Besides, the stocks are not going so good like in the past few years, but we, are, we, are, we have like solid results. And those are one of the things that we would like to, uh, to change a little bit. When you see like the chart that we are going to a more traditional to non-traditional net revenue and mainly on, on a digital side, we are thinking that probably by 2021, 2022 or so, we're going to be reaching more than 70 billion in net revenue. So it's quite a, a huge increase. And we are figuring that probably 70% or more will come from no tradition. That's like channels that are more digital, and then we need to have like the best interactions possible with our customers. That's our point of sales. And of course, in some markets, we also have franchises model that we go direct to the consumer. So this B2B2C kind of journey is something that we are implementing in many countries. You're going to see in the rollout phase how we are figuring uh, to measure that. But like we need to speed like very fast. So I'm going to show you the, the video. It's just two minutes. ABI is transforming the way our sales teams interact with our customers through the new Contact Strategy 2.0 model, in which we can respond to opportunities and adapt to new experiences' expectations. The revised Contact Strategy rules, coupled with our integrated solutions, allows us to leverage our service level and effectiveness in our sales processes, optimizing routines and improving results, enabling a full visibility between teams at every interaction in the pod. Early in the morning, our BDR Mike remotely joins the sales meeting. He already has planned his routine and visits for the day. Using OnTap, he reviews his business results and priorities before visiting customers. Arriving at John's store, Mike reaches the app to check his main goal for the visit. Our BDR greets John and conducts a POC e-survey, checking all of the execution standards. Now he is ready to sell in the combo promotion activation. He also finds the opportunity to sell a new display. It will look great. Back to ONTAP, our BDR assigns a new task to his merchandiser. New commitments from BDRs are updated real-time to our telesales. Nancy can add products to the retailer's next order using on-call. The retailer places a new order in TapWiser. Our telesales is connected to all B2B orders, and every new order is an opportunity for upselling quantities and promoting new SKUs. Order placed, and in the next day, it becomes a new task for our driver Peter in his on-time app. Peter can browse through his delivery schedule and real-time traffic conditions. Products arrive on time as expected by John. He can track his order and rate the delivery. Oliver, our merchandiser, is notified of his new objective in the ONTAP app and can now build the new display at John's store. All set? Looks great! 
Meanwhile, our BDR Stephanie is heading to sell in the connected POC solution. She introduces the features and benefits of the app to the POC owner, Joey. Connected POC is installed and starts to provide real-time results on the app. A few days ahead, Stephanie is back and reviews the waste report with Joey. They find an opportunity to reduce overpouring. Joey demonstrates the proper pouring technique to his bartender to minimize waste. Our BDR leverages connected POC insights to recommend a food combo. Suggestion taken by Joey, and now Stephanie can set up the POC with the campaign. She shares her execution with colleagues. It's a hit! The food combo is a success with consumers. Joey is surprised with the results by monitoring the performance real-time with the connected POC app. Cheers! Joey can rely on his BDR as a consultant and partner. Our new contact strategy 2.0 model is increasing efficiency for ABI while improving service level for our retailers and consumers. The integration of the systems are improving the way we communicate and respond to POX needs. This way, we will be able to deliver our objective of being more effective at a better cost and with improved service level. Leveraging technology to win. So, guys, none of those guys that uh, appeared were actors, so uh, as you can see, the POC owner was like... <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so... And then, why NPS? So, as you, as you saw, we are very good in cost to sell. Uh, over the years, we understood how to be like more productive and, and having better tools for us to uh, attend the POCs in, in, with lower uh, costs. But then we struggle with the service level part. We were, we were trying to measure like uh, until uh, last year uh, towards to our B2B. We were saying, okay, if it's like more digital, maybe this is a very good proxy for us to have a kind of service level metrics and let's go with that. Then at the same time, I was contacting with customer gauge. I met Jonathan, then Jonathan, Talk to me, man, we're gonna have like a next week or so uh, a conference in Boston, you should go and so on. I, I was like, uh, uh, more blah, blah, blah. No, I, I, uh. <laughs> and then, but then Jonathan convinced me to go and it was very good. So I like it a lot, uh, the convention that we had in Boston last year. And then I, I came back to the office and I said, guys, we need to implement NPS very fast. Is an important thing, and then I started the journey, right? So I started to talking to my counterparts, and the guys, I oh, know, but I know the business for 20 years, and all these kind of things that you probably heard already, uh, or are hearing right now. And, and the sales structure is like uh, very much driven on a gut feeling, right? No, I know because I did, uh, blah blah blah, and I can say that because I worked 12 years in sales. So okay, I know how it works, and I can talk to everybody because they know me as well. So I like, man, cut the bullshit and let's go to the data because then I ran the analytics. Uh, part of the company as well, and I say, guys, without data, you, if your opinion or my opinion, I stick with my opinion, right? So I don't need to hear your opinion because I worked here for 12 years as well, so we need to implement NPS. Then what was good and one of the things that I learned last year with customer engagement is that we need to have like the C level commitment, right? So I was in one presentation to Brito, that's our CEO. I was not presenting, I was just in the room. Uh, the VP of sales, he was presenting. And then he just mentioned at NPS, like very briefly, because the subject was some other stuff that is embedded in this pizza chart that we used to say. Uh, and then he said, oh, and by the way, we are starting to measure NPS. And then Brito, what? NPS? Uh, the same NPS that uh, I've been hearing like uh, for more than 10 years. Uh, so man, then you, you can understand how, the, how was the meeting, right? So it's something that uh, we as ABI, we are not measuring like in a global scale. Of course, we have like small initiatives in, in, in some countries that we have. Uh, we, are, we, we are presenting like in all the continents we have more than 200,000 employees. So if we just start a survey for ourselves, it would be great, right? Uh, but we didn't have like this at scale. So then we started and then we put in this digital piece, like all the, the NPS uh, cycle, and this is how we started. So then we started the first touch bases with customer gauge was in May. This meeting was June, July. And then I was doing the pilot with Jonathan, Tracy, and, and Andrew in Peru. 
at the same time, we did a pilot in Peru. The NPS was very good, minus 13. <laughs> and then we said, oh, minus 13, what a crap. But then we set our mindset with minus 13, right? So every result that we had after that, that was minus whatever, ah, we already know, so it's OK. And then suddenly, in Mexico, we had 30%. And then I said, oh, man, 30% in Mexico. And we know as Brazilian, I'm Brazilian, I'm from Brazil, so and Mexico. So we don't rate like the guys very bad because we're like, oh, OK, I'm, I'm not going to give a five, even though it's a five, I'm going to put a seven. So OK, of course, like the results were a little bit different in Mexico. And then we took out our franchisees, and the result was to 17. OK, from 30 to 17, even though very good, considering the minus 13, minus 17, and so on, but a little bit more realistic uh, with the thing that we have. So, using some, some things with customer gauge, I, had, uh, I did a graphic to show the guys uh, last year that, and this was presented uh, from an MIT professor, I forgot her name, but she presented it during the session. I just captured the image to, to say, okay, guys, we are not a digital company, we're never gonna be. We are a M&A company like over the years. We, we, we try to digitize as much as possible our process, but some of the stuff, it's already being born like a digital. Why cannot put NPS since the beginning in our B2B, for instance? And then I mentioned like a uh, Starbucks case that uh, they had like a, uh, in four years, a NPS of 23%. And again, it's a proxy, right? I cannot compare with countries, with some other companies and so on. This was mentioned here before, and it's true. Uh, but it was a proxy for us to understand, like, OK, if in four years they changed from 23 to 77%, I don't know uh, who of you guys, I live in New York, so I have the, the Starbucks app. Every day I, I pass by the, the store, and my coffee is there, because I already ordered by the train. So it's very convenient. I have a lot of points. I, I'm a very good customer. I receive uh, coffee like on my birthday. So it's kind of convenient, good, and they are improving the experience, right? So after this, look at the stocks, raised more than 180% in the same period of time. So they increased the NPS, and it was highly correlated to the, to the results. And then we are here in a, con, in a conference that the name is Monetize, right? So everybody wants to monetize. And, and my company is like the guy, said, show me the money, where's the money, and so on. But we're just starting. We, we, have, we have nothing. We don't have a baseline. We have nothing. So how can we try to monetize right now? So it's not the time. So again, if you are thinking about that, I'm going to show some results. There is no results. We are just starting. But uh, if we look back for some cases, it's kind of very promising. It's not only about NPS, of course. There is a lot of uh, uh, other metrics embedded here, as the DHL presented, like the algorithm that they have, like to select the customers and so on. So there is much more metrics than the NPS, but NPS is a very good proxy uh, for that as well. So then, of course, we put in now our entire journey. We need to like rebuild the entire journey based on, on interactions and so on. Then uh, Suru, that's here with me, he is going to talk a little bit more. I'm from demand, so I'm the one that starts the projects, the pilot. So I put the ball running, and then they need to like keep the ball running and score. <laughs> so I just started. Now it's with like the business transformation area. He's going to talk a little bit more, but just for you to know that we put in our entire process, and of course there is some benefits and and a lot of challenges as we are starting to have this process. Uh, right now. And my last comment here, of course, uh, it's like it's about uh, not everybody in the organization should start this. It's always a small group that starts, but we need to have the right level starting, right? If we don't have like the commitment with the chiefs, with like some kind of VP and so on, uh, like ourselves, we're never going to go ahead. So like uh, we managed to have these year targets on our chiefs. So they have targets on NPS, of course. What is the target if I don't have a baseline, right? I just mentioned that I don't have a baseline. How, how do you have a target? So the target is to have the baseline and to keep the baseline this year. And then next year, we understand the process to then improve the baseline. So the target that we have this year is at least to everybody measure in all the markets, not comparison between markets, but we need to have the metrics and then evolve in the process. So I think, so with what Gunjim said, so basically he's got the easy job, so I've got the tough job of now making it happen, right? So, so that's, what, that's what I need to do in my part as business transformation. But now, I'm, now actually we're going to talk to you a little bit about how we're making it happen, right? So I think a, a, a good sort of starting point for us, and, and, and we're big, we're, we're big, you know, ABI likes to do things fast, right? Uh, and now in order to kind of achieve 
achieve this at, at the scale that we are, that we operate in. I think one of the things that we wanted to do is to make sure that you know, we, we put in a, a global structure to the extent possible that kind of makes it easier for countries to kind of execute uh, you know, the program, right? And, and I think part of that with, with the functionality, with the capability, allows us to kind of you know, localize. So, so today, just to give you a sense of how that structure looks for us, you know, we saw what DHL does, but this is how our structure looks. So we localize content today. Uh, in many of our countries, we operate as, as, as different brands. So we don't operate only as AB and Bev. We've got our traditional brands, right? So Modelo, uh, Bavaria. So many customers recognize us with, those, with the older brands. So what we also do is kind of localize the survey. We've got local translations in there, et cetera, uh, to make sure that you know, we, we, we create that experience for the customer, the customer really recognizes us, and that kind of helps us with our response rates. Uh, and of course, you know, one thing that we wanted to do is to make it simple, right? We didn't want to have an extensively long survey, uh, which takes time and effort from a customer's perspective, so how do we make it simple? So I think that's what kind of got us thinking in terms of how we need to design it. Uh, as Gonjim said, you know, today, today for us to connect with our customers, it's just not about email. We also use a lot of SMS because we also deal with many markets uh, which do not have such sort of, you know, a, you know, a low in sort of the digital maturity, right? So it kind of means that, you know, we still uh, communicate on the phone with many of our customers, right? So SMS is a key feature that we also use, uh, you know, we use with this capability. So that's why the primary question is kind of designed in there. So it's, it's, it's the standard NPS question, you know, what do you, would you recommend, uh, you know, ABI or, or, you know, let's say Modelo uh, to another business like your own? So that's what we use as the primary question. And of course, after we get that primary question, you know, how do we kind of decide, you know, what are those areas of improvement? So what we did is kind of use the driver's approach, uh, and we've kind of segregated our survey structure into four uh, buckets of drivers. Uh, the first is kind of focused on, uh, you know, ABN Bev as an organization, their perception of our organization, the way, the day, the way we do business with them. The second bucket is more focused around you know, our products, our catalog, uh, you know, our pricing strategy, you know, the promotions, marketing campaigns, et cetera. So that's your second bucket, you know, the way we sell to them. The third is actually all of our touch points. So Gunjim kind of talked about the touch points, but, but we have various touch points that we interact with our customer with, right? Be it our telesales organization, be it our B2B organization, be it our delivery uh, engines, right? Because we move a lot of product. So it's basically about how do we measure you know, their experience around those touch points. And then lastly, I think the emotional quotient. It's also important you know, how we measure our customer service teams because we are high on customer service as well. So of course, you know, how is that emotional quotient of the customer? So there's a fourth section around customer service. So we use a very similar approach to DHL. So we've got around 16, 17 drivers that we measure. And then finally, uh, towards the end, we also talk about our open comment box, right? Where you know, they have an opportunity to give us feedback. Prime, uh, so as we've kind of deployed across various markets, we've tried to maintain the structure to the extent possible. But of course, we do allow flexibility to some of our countries to ask in additional questions that will help their business uh, to kind of manage and, and understand customer experience better. Now, some of the other things that we do as business transformation is also to make sure that while we deploy the solution, it's also imp important that we provide as much capability. So I have counterparts uh, within each of, the, each of the countries that I kind of work with very closely. And, and here are some of the things that we did which to help the implementation. Um, First is around building a playbook, right? How do we make it easy to implement, right? So we, we, we actually worked a lot with Customer Gauge, brought in a lot of practices that we could share back with the business, you know, built out a playbook to say, okay, this is how I can implement and adopt uh, NPS in my, uh, in my organization. And more importantly, you know, how do I then, what do I do with the data, right? What do I do with the data? How do I look at the data? How do I analyze the data? Uh, how do I close the loop, et cetera? So I think we partnered a lot with, with Customer Gauge to kind of deploy that. So we kind of build out the model, the playbooks. Uh, another big piece is around training and onboarding. Uh, it's, you know, I've been talking to some people in the breaks. I think extremely important to get buy-in from the organization, and that's a process that we said to make sure that we penetrate well into the businesses, uh, into the countries. We need that buy-in, and and you know we allow we make that buy-in happen through the way we've kind of designed a training program, right, for each of the businesses on how we onboard them onto the concept of NPS and how they can use NPS to really drive CX uh, within the organization. So I think that's the second piece. A third piece that we also focused on is how do we make it simple to deploy, right? So 
me, you know, in a global organization, kind of pretty much runs the administration, the deployment of the survey, uh, which also includes, for example, sample sizes. You know, Gonjim talked about, you know, the number of box that we have. You know, we deal with about six million box. Uh, when I say box, is point of consumptions, right? Bar owners, restaurants, uh, distributors, resellers. So we've got a lot of customers that we deal with. But how do we pick an appropriate sample size, right? Because we can't survey everybody at the beginning. It's a program that needs to mature. So of course, one of the other things that we also help is to sample size the right set of customers. So what we want the business to really focus on is to basically, you know, look at your feedback, understand your performance, and then of course, how do I drive improvement, right? How do I drive experience within the business? And that's what the third one's focused on. Of course, then we've got an entire engine, you know, which is working on all the reporting, analytics, data, and of course, how can we keep giving the business more and more information that helps them drive up, uh, you know, improvements. Okay, and, and just a little bit more in terms of how we implement. So our scope is large, right? Uh, like I said, you know, we started in September. By the end of March, we expect to finish what we call as our baseline. We want to, we want to build the baseline so, we ha so our countries basically have an opportunity to start driving improvement during the year. We've got about 26, 27 markets that we're deploying in. You see some of those countries listed there. Each of them have uh, you know, longer cycles than the other. It also depends upon how mature they are, uh, you know, how you know, the alignment kind of takes time, because of course we need the buy-in from the entire organization as we go to deploy, because that's important when it comes to closing the loop. And then, you know, more, and more importantly, when it comes to really driving improvement. So we've got, we've got a good cycle out there. We've done nearly 50% of this implementation already. Uh, we've got another 50% to do, but, you know, you know as, I was, as some of the speakers were speaking on stage, I was actually, in fact, releasing some surveys for some countries as well while that was going on, because we need to keep moving forward, right? Because we need to get to that deadline of end of the month so, we, so our countries really know what they want to focus on for the year. Right? So that's, that's, that's our journey in terms of our scale, our scope that we're going after. And of course, you know, we've, we've built out a roadmap for the year. Uh, you know, our first quarter is primarily focused on baselining, getting all the countries to kind of work through it. But of course, we've, we've created a journey, you know, throughout, throughout the year. I think our next focus is going to, how do we start to, you know, look at pilots around the monetized capability. Uh, we also need to kind of, you know, improve our sample sizes, right? So we've got certain response rates now. Uh, how do we kind of improve engagement with each of these customers in the countries, improve sample sizes, get to a larger uh, scope of people, align it to our revenue cycles, et cetera. So, so a lot more around the deployment and the implementation. So we're definitely going to learn with every every wave. We hope to kind of reach out to our customers twice, maybe three times in this calendar year, and of course use that as a measurement process to drive improvement. And while we do that, we are also kind of focused on building the capability within our countries as well so that they have enough uh, to be able to drive the improvement. And finally, it kind of links back to all of the stuff that Gonjim talked about in terms of our digital strategy, and that's giving the right inputs to that strategy, which is extremely important, right? Because it's the customer that really tells us whether we're doing the right thing or not. And I think that's what we believe this process is going to help us to do. So that's pretty much what this, what this detail roadmap talks about, but that's, that's the focus from an onboarding standpoint. And with that, it kind of uh, gets us to our dream, right? And our, our dream is really to know that, of course, you know, if we know that a, that a particular customer of ours is about to leave, right, how can we retain them, right? How can we, how can we keep them and, and do more business with them? Secondly, it's also about how do we get our existing customers to buy more? Right? And we keep using this term internally, saying, how do we sell one more case of beer? Right? So, so how do we make that happen? And we believe that I think NPS is definitely one way to kind of do that. Uh, and you know, it's a simple process to kind of use. Uh, but we believe that at, at some point, you know, we will be able to make that journey successful and make this dream uh, successful as well. Yep. So that's it. That's it. That's pretty much it. Yeah.